you. Thank you for the last contact. We gave three problems in the Lima. Mike, J3, I'm all right. Go ahead. When you find yourself on a solar weather website and you see three measurements front and centre on your screen, have you ever wondered what they actually mean? Solar Flux Index, SFI, Sunspot Number, SSN, and Area are three indices used to measure solar activity along with R and KP values. Let's take a look at what these values mean to amateur radio. One of the key solar indices is a measure known as solar flux. It's used as the basic indicator of solar activity and to determine the level or amount of radiation being received from the sun. The higher the solar flux, the better for amateur radio. Solar flux is measured in solar flux units and is the amount of radio noise or flux that is emitted at a frequency of 2800 megahertz. The solar flux is closely related to the amount of ionization and hence the electron concentration in the F2 region. As a result, it gives a very good indication of conditions for long distance communication. Uh, one of the guides from uh, Japan and uh, the figure for solar flux can vary from as low as 50 to as high as 300. Low values indicate that the maximum usable frequency will be low and overall HF conditions will not be very good. Conversely, high values generally indicate there is sufficient ionisation to support long distance communication at higher than normal frequencies. If I hear you on 15, I'll break in and uh, I'll buck in and, uh, and say good day. VK5QD, VK8NSB. Okay, VK3, VDL, yeah, HR, SCD, and I'll get my Yeah, 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 Turning our attention to the sunspot number, SSN is the primary time series in solar and solar terrestrial physics. Sunspots are areas that appear dark on the surface of the sun. They are dark because they are cooler than other parts of the sun's surface. In 1848, Rudolf Wolf, avid astronomical historian and an unrivalled expert on sunspots in his time, devised a daily method of estimating solar activity by counting the number of individual spots and groups of spots on the face of the sun. Wolf calculated sunspot numbers by adding 10 times the number of groups to the total count of individual spots as neither quantity alone completely captured the level of activity. Today, Wolf sunspot counts continue since no other index of the sun's activity reaches into the past as far and as continuously. Wolf 
confirmed the existence of a solar cycle in sunspot numbers. He also more accurately determined the cycle's length to be 11.1 years by using early historical records. Today, much more sophisticated measurements of solar activity are made routinely, but none has the link with the past that sunspot numbers have. You may also have heard of smooth sunspot numbers. The smooth monthly numbers result from an averaging of the monthly mean values over the 13 months, from six months before to six months after the current month. It has been used as a standard for so many decades and remains the base reference. High levels of sunspot activity lead to better signal propagation on the HF bands, but there is a trade-off. Increased levels of solar radiation results in high levels of solar noise and ionospheric disturbances, making for challenging QSOs on the amateur bands. Finally, to area measurement, probably the most least understood measurement. Solar flares usually take place in active regions, which are areas on the sun, marked by the presence of strong magnetic fields, which are typically associated with sunspot groups. A sunspot has size, which is represented by an area measurement. The area of a flare is commonly measured in units of one millionth of the visible solar hemisphere. One millionth of the hemisphere is approximately three million square kilometres. At the time of making this video, sunspots 2960, 2965, 67 and 68 were Earth-facing. According to NOAA, the area of the spots were 300, 600, 30 and 10 respectively totaling 940. This is a brief introduction to the three key measurements of activity on our sun. For more detailed information, check out the education section of the Australian Bureau of Meteorology's Space Weather pages. Uh, probably a bit better, but no, I just running barefoot here. The amplifier was on before, I didn't realise it, but uh, uh, here I'm just... When it comes to working yeah, just, DX, uh, the yeah, higher the SFI, the better the conditions will be for the higher HF frequencies, and even 6 metres. An index of 120 or more is good. However, the levels need to be maintained for some days. In this way, the overall level of ionisation in the F2 layer will build up. Typically, values of 150 or more will ensure good HF band conditions. The greater the sunspot number, the better, but 50 and above is good. And of course, more sunspots will increase the total area measurement. Solar flares are large eruptions of electromagnetic radiation, lasting from minutes to hours. These flares are the origin of solar storms, increasing the level of geomagnetic activity and affecting usable radio frequencies, which in turn cause radio blackouts. The planetary K index or KP value is the Global Geomagnetic Activity Index that is based on three hour measurements from ground-based magnetometers around the world. It's an excellent indication of disturbances in the Earth's magnetic field. The lower the number, the better for DX. Radio blackouts are classified using a five-level scale. This correlates to the solar flare classification. On many solar websites, you'll see a space weather overview showing real-time conditions. On the right-hand side of this chart, you'll see the R value, or radio blackout value. 
R1 blackouts are minor and typically occur after an M1 flare. They're indicative of a weak or minor degradation of HF radio communication. R3 blackouts are strong and follow an X1 flare. This is symptomatic of a wide area blackout of HF radio communications, resulting in loss of radio contact for about an hour on the sunlit side of the Earth. R5 blackouts are extreme and thankfully very rare. They result in a complete HF radio blackout on the entire sunlit side of the Earth, lasting for a number of hours. After a flare, be sure to check out the D-layer absorption charts. This chart highlights the impact of the solar X-ray flux and SEP, or the Solar Energetic Particle Events, on HF radio communication. So now you know what those numbers mean on solar weather sites and how to interpret them. For good DX, the solar flux should remain above 150 for a few days, with the K-index being below 2. Keep in mind the K-index will rise after a solar flare. Solar Cycle 25 is just getting going, so when these conditions have been met, the DX should be good.